37 thousand accidents a year in the post office. Over 10,000 to engineering staff. A big problem for managers to tackle, but also a problem which ought to disturb every member of the engineering staff. A manager has to give the lead, but there can be little success in the campaign against accidents unless everyone, right down the line, is paying attention to safe working day by day. This telephone manager is on his way to take the chair at a safety committee meeting, a place where management and staff get together to discuss and plan how best to organize the safety program. To persuade you, me, and the other fellows to take safety to heart. There's a safe way to do every job, and if all of us really organized our work to include the necessary safety measures, these 10,000 accidents would be cut right down and a lot of suffering avoided. So the <laughs> You've all got your copies of the agenda for this meeting. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm glad to see that everybody's here, and so as there are no apologies for absence. With about 100,000 men on duty scattered about all over the country, it's a big task to organize the engineering safety effort. Safety committees like this meet regularly in each telephone area to do their part, and there are 60 such committees active in areas up and down the country. But what are you doing to help? Have you got any ideas about making the job safer in your area? If you have, put them to the local safety committee. One way to prevent accidents is to learn lessons from those that have already happened. The area office has details of all accidents, at least they should have, all accidents should be reported. Apart from feeding information to safety services branch at headquarters, accident reports are picked out for special consideration by the local committee. So it is that we find on the agenda the heading, Examination of Selected Accident Report. Let's join the committee as they look into an accident to an installer, fitting a telephone in the subscriber's lounge. He's run the drop wire, ready to lead it in through the window frame. We pick up the story as he comes inside and puts down his tools. Back bent in a lifting posture which could be improved. And now he really starts asking for trouble as he brings in a short section of aluminum extension ladder. See how he sets it up at a shallow, unsafe angle on the polished floor. There's that habitually bad bent back lifting stance again. Almost inevitably, as he applies pressure to the gimlet, the foot of the ladder slips outwards, and down come ladder and man. Yet it need never have happened. Let's go back to where things started to go wrong and see how it should have been done, the safe way. And remember this, a single short section of aluminum extension ladder used indoors involves one of the greatest risks of ladder slipping. There is just no latitude for error in ladder angle, lashing and footing, especially on a polished floor. Worse still, the risk is unnecessary. Five tread folding steps should be used for a job like this. They're adequate for most domestic situations and designed for transportation in small vans. But never stand on the top tread of steps. Notice the improved lifting technique. He picks up the gimlet, removing the protective cork from the point and on with the job. And what's more, fit for another job tomorrow. Now the committee turns to an analysis of the area statistics which shows numbers and types of accidents for the various engineering groups. We've had a number of lifting and handling accidents. Lifting and handling is the biggest engineering accident group and today the local spotlight turns on the large number of lifting and handling accidents on underground work in the area. The committee discusses the number of injuries resulting from handling joint box covers and decides to take a closer look at the problem. Typical of what they can visualize is a two-man jointing party setting up the site. Traffic cones and guards go out, none too carefully.
watch it. That's no place to put a bar. Injuries have been caused this way, and that was almost another one. Just look at that bent back. He's a candidate for backache, not to mention the risk to his hands and feet. Well, I'll be... Start again. You know the correct drill. That's better. But see if you can spot the deliberate oversight. Remember, you need a two foot long wooden block of about two inches by four inches cross section, plus a roller, as well as a number two lifting tool for lifting this footway cover. And this is how to go about it. Get your back straight from the word go, and make your knees do the bending. Free the cover by using the key in the reverse position. Lift with the knees and insert the block, narrow side up, under the corner of the cover. This allows the roller to be inserted well forward. Lift again, remove the block and slide the cover off slightly. You're now ready for the first gas test. Did you spot the error? Of course. He failed to reverse the key on the handle before attempting to free the cover. Don't forget to purge the tester and zero the meter. Make the first test just under the cover. The test is negative. the cover can be pulled clear. Place the roller where it will not cause any danger and carry on with the gas test. Remember, never, never skip a gas test. There's nothing to be gained from cutting corners on safety measures and often very much to lose. The men on the job and the committee, refreshed by a cup of tea, press on with their equally important job both in their own way, engineering safety. The committee looks at another accident category, stepping on and striking against. Let's turn to the figures for stepping on and striking against. Dangers lurk on untidy housing sites like this. Strong boots and a safety helmet are advisable, and it's essential to be doubly alert for hazards in your path. Otherwise, this sort of thing happens. Every month, Safety Services Branch at CHQ issues an engineering poster. Managers get advance notice of this so that safety committees can discuss in good time how to put them to best use. The first poster in the program is concerned with eye accidents. The poster for the next quarter will be, look while you can. Posters are produced at the CHQ Illustration Studio. And here we see the artist putting the finishing touches to the poster before it's approved and printed. Look while you can. A message about wearing eye shields, which is often ignored. Let's look inside a telephone exchange. And here's a man taking chances with his precious eyesight. It's a good thing for him that his supervisor is alert to the danger and does something about it. This is Supervisor Staff Contact in Action. These tools, too, are a danger lying on the treads of the traveling ladder. Safety measures regularly practiced reduce accidents. No engineering can replace an eye. But using correct methods and proper protection, everyone can engineer his own safety on jobs like this. While in the exchange, we take a look at the use of tools. Surely all men know how to use a number one screwdriver safely. But how many of you would use it as this man is doing? It may seem harmless, but here is a sharp instrument which can so easily slip directed at the palm of the hand. Fortunately, this man realizes his folly before he does any damage. 
A plug needs to rest on a firm surface, and sharp tools must be directed away from the body. From simple tasks to the more complicated operations, always be alert to data.